Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today, we had a wild day in both directions. Bears overall coming out with a big win, but there's some signs of bulls having a little bit of hope to try and hold things off here. We started the day with a bearish reaction to the jobs numbers. Our daily lower highs were very quickly set, and it was one of the weakest first halves of the trading day that we've seen in a very long time. All major sectors dropping together, Tesla down 10%, NVDA down 10%, I'm going to make a video specific for Tesla after this one. So keep an eye out for that. Going to put that out on a bunch of different social media platforms. But essentially, the, the theme of the morning was complete bear control, slow grind down. RSI means nothing because the RSI was absolutely crushed. I mean, NVDA's RSI was almost zero on the 15 minute time frame. It was like two. I don't think it can hit zero, but it was two. And then we finally got a bounce going. And then bulls controlled the entire rest of the afternoon into the bounce. So unless you were an aggressive bear first thing in the morning or an aggressive bull that had good timing and were not too entry on the bounce, those were really the, the two opportunities for trades today. And, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing where I can't wait for futures trading because right now I would be scouting hourly lower highs, but we just ran out of time on the day. And so it's a bit frustrating to see that happen because again, the most likely scenario of this bounce is an hourly lower high and it's gonna happen after hours. So in the end where we stand, daily bear flag confirmed, but no follow through at the moment. If I'm gonna keep that statement true, if I'm gonna say that we had a daily bear flag with zero follow through, I have to see the bulls, I have to see SPY confirm an hourly uptrend tomorrow. So wherever we open, if we open higher, still gonna scout a lower high compared to 387.49. If we open lower, then our hourly lower high will be set. But we have to see the hourly trend change for the bulls for us to say, okay, that's a little reverse jujitsu. That's, that's bears taking out a key support and having full control, but then giving it back fairly quickly. So, Bears are comfortable. Obviously, it's a big win for the bears today. SPY down 1.4%. The NASDAQ down 2.5%. So a lot of red out there. But again, there's still a little bit of hope. And the little bit of hope is in our other major sectors, not the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ continues to lead the way down as it has all year. We can see the daily bear flag is more convincing on the NASDAQ. But where the bulls held on, XLF defended support and had a significant bounce. And XLV held support and is trying to regain an uptrend. So essentially the analogy from yesterday's video about the fist fight, the hoof, the hoof fight between the, the bear, the bulls and the bears. Again, just a quick summary. It was <clears throat> bears with the sucker punch. Bulls are ready to fight now. And the bears won out with NASDAQ. Bears followed through but the bulls are continuing to put up a fight on XLF and XLV. So the simple statement is, if the bears are gonna have confidence that we're gonna roll over to our fear lows, and this morning it certainly looked like fear lows are inevitable, we have to break XLV and XLF. They have to follow and join Team Bear. And right now they're defending support. So 133.71 is a key support level for XLV, and for XLF that support is 33.19. And we held that support by two pennies. So essentially, we could say that if XLF and XLV break the lows that I just highlighted, the probabilities that we're going to head back to fear lows for the S&P 500 will increase fairly notably. If the bulls hold these levels and confirm hourly uptrends tomorrow, just looking at XLF, again, big bounce, but we know an hourly lower high is most likely have to follow through. If XLF and XLV bulls can confirm the hourly uptrend back in their favor tomorrow. Big bounce on XLV. If they can do that, it's gonna give the bulls a little bit of hope to try and be shaping up this two week higher low on the S&P 500. Essentially, it's the same thing we do on a daily basis for day trading. The bell rings and I'm staring at our major sectors, QQQ, XLF, XLV. Are they all dropping at the low at the same time? Are only some, who's lead bull, who's lead bear? And in this moment, the daily chart is just a different version of that, a different time frame. It's QQQ lead bear breaking support, XLV lead bull closing up at the high of the day, and XLV and XLF on the daily time frames did not join Team Bear today. They were weak, they were red, but they didn't break support. So for, we've got one trading day left 
This week, we've got four trading days in the year. Next week, five total. And that's what it all depends on, is XLF and XLV key daily supports here. So tomorrow, hourly trends are very key. Do we confirm hourly uptrends for bounce follow through or do bears take right, take right back over? There was some pretty impressive bull volume on the bounce. I mean, that end of the day volume <clears throat> is impressive. Those 15 minute candles, obviously the big one at the end there, but even those 15 minute candles were matching the bear volume on the morning. So tomorrow's a pretty key day. Shape up that trend change or not. The dollar is still doing nothing. I don't care about the dollar unless it breaks 103.44 for a bear break or unless it breaks 104.93 for a bull break. It's just been sideways for the last seven trading days, uneventful. And again, we've been breaking the correlation between equities and the dollar over the last, ever since the CPI reaction, essentially. NVDA lead bear today. So we were watching this head and shoulders. It was certainly a little dinky right shoulder, but... There's your lower high, quick little bear flag confirming, and it was just absolute free fall. We closed strong yesterday because of the jobs numbers. We opened at the low of yesterday first thing and then just nosedive. I mean, <clears throat> it was one of the weakest days that we've seen NVDA pretty much since we bottomed at our fear low of 108. Hourly bounce at the end of the day, much less impressive. Again, you could just compare the individual names by their retracement sizes. How much did we retrace on the bounce compared to where we came from pre-market? And we can see we're not close to 382. You compare that to one of our lead bouncers, XLV, and we retrace the whole thing. So if you're wanting to compare individual names, who's stronger, who's weaker, the names that retraced more significantly have more space for a, an hourly higher low to try and form here. <clears throat> Netflix, shout out to the bulls holding on extremely well. Didn't really come close to breaking the low of yesterday. Closed at the high of today, and definitely, it, st it started pre-market standing out, and it, it remained the case all day. So Netflix, a lead bull holding well, no daily downtrend confirming. Essentially, we can distinguish names between who's confirmed the daily bear flags, who have not, and then we can zoom in on the hourly and distinguish names by their bounce retracement sizes. Apple didn't confirm the daily bear flag. We know that QQQ did. We know that Amazon did and Microsoft did, Apple did not. So that's another thing. If I'm a bear, I really want to see Apple take out that support level and head to our fear low of 128.65. That needs to break for confidence that the NASDAQ is headed back to its fear low. At the low of today, we were about three and a quarter, three and a half percent from the NASDAQ heading to that fear low. So again, I know I just said a whole bunch of different things, some contradicting. Big win for the Bears today, but there's a glimmer of hope for the Bulls in XLF, XLV daily supports, Apple daily support, and that's pretty much the hope that, we're, that the Bulls are clinging to because if those levels break, probabilities of heading back to the fear lows increase significantly. IWM, daily bear flag confirmed, but no follow through at the moment. Notable bounce, but we have to confirm the hourly trend change, same as everybody else. So an aggressive bull tomorrow can look at this and say, okay, that's a big enough hourly bounce that I am going to be interested in an hourly higher low. And if we break the low of yesterday, that would stop me out. But that is a lot of space on a lot of names for an hourly higher low attempt. In hindsight, when was the time to go long for this bounce? Again, the mindset that I am in, and this is for my own protection as a trader, because my edge, one of my edges as a trader is a bounce trader. And those of you that have been watching for a long time know that I love them. 2018, end of year market collapse, all over it. Crypto bounces all over them. But in this market environment, if I were trying to play all these extreme bounces, I would be blowing up my account. So I had to adopt, I had to adopt a, a clear blanket statement where to protect myself, if we are in free fall, if we are bearish on all time frames, I am not looking to play a bounce because if I am, I will enter too soon. And it's happened so many times where we've had so many dumps this year where we follow through or where RSI is out the window. Again, as a bounce trader, RSI is one of my most important tools. 
And it's only, it's the usefulness, it's only useful in an uptrend. It's way less useful in the downtrend. And today was a perfect example. RSI didn't help at all on today's bounce. If you're in a bull market, it's much easier to play bounces using RSI as a bit of a guide. And that's when we use our back burner trades. <clears throat> so for me, you know, I look at today's action and I wanted to play a bounce the entire morning. It wasn't a full trading day for me. I was doing other things. So I wasn't, you know, fully in the zone, but it's the kind of thing where I just say, nope, I'm just not playing a bounce. And that's discipline. And yes, I missed opportunity. I didn't get the bounce at the end of the day. But if I went into the day with the mindset of I'm going to try and play a bounce, I definitely would have attempted too early because of where the RSI levels were, how extreme we were to the downside. But today was definitely an anomaly day with how crushed things got. And we knew the bounce. Again, it's, it's knowing the bounce is inevitable. I know I'm going to watch an hourly bounce take place without me. I have to accept that knowing that I don't have confidence in nailing the bottom. The hindsight was the first time we confirmed the five minute uptrend on SPY, that was the low of the day. At no point did we confirm a five minute uptrend and then we did and then we only went up from there into the close. And the NASDAQ had a little fake out where we, no, actually it didn't, I take that back. We rejected from resistance here. I mean, so that was a signal, first five minute uptrend for the bulls. And that's, that's an example of, again, patience, knowing that you don't need to nail the bottom. And it's the kind of, you then have a support level to play off of, where if you long on the five minute trend change occurring, your stop goes under the low. There's definitely a decent amount of risk there. So your position isn't large, but anybody scaling in to try and play a bounce today got crushed because of, again, the extremes and the slow grind down all the majority of the morning and, and the start of the afternoon. So I am in a protective trading mindset, knowing that the macro environment and the macro trends do not favor my bounce edge as a trader. It will eventually. And so I'm just waiting for that. You know, my, my bounce edge as a trader is so much better in a bull market than a bear market. So why don't I just wait for the next bull market before I start actively pursuing those trades again? That's my mindset of what I'm waiting for. And today was just frustrating because it was finally, all right, we got our bounce now. I'm scouting for a 15 minute or an hourly lower high. And I made one little attempt here for a, a potential hourly bear flag with a, a tiny stop out. But then we get to, you know, 350 and it's, well, great. You know, the, we're going to set the hourly lower high shortly after the market closes, in my opinion, but we're out of time. So essentially a whole lot of sitting on my hands, waiting for the bounce so I could short, but then the, the bounce taking place into the close, leaving me no time to short. Again, futures trading, looking forward to it. Biotech sector also standing out green, very notable, significant dip buying, and just not nearly as weak. Again, like, who was it? XLV, didn't break the low of yesterday. Was that XLV? No, XLV did. Somebody didn't break the low of yesterday. Netflix. Anyways, the biotech sector, big win for the bulls to hold that strong. And up testing the recent highs, daily inside bar, and still watching that two day equilibrium of 84.18. So very notable strength in the biotech sector the last, really the last three days. Let's look at XBI. So I haven't looked at this chart yet, but I bet we got three green candles on XBI divided by SPY just through observing the two sectors trading next to each other the last three days. Curious if this is going to give us any clues into the direction that the two-day equilibrium is going to break. Is that a monthly trend change trying to take place? Maybe. If this monthly uptrend confirms on the relative strength of the biotech sector to the S&P 500, that would be a, an ideal setup. If XBI breaks the two-day equilibrium bullish and this chart confirms a monthly uptrend. Gold still a rising wedge possible. Still watching it. Dollar not breaking resistance. Still waiting on the dollar. But this is a rising wedge. We're either going to see the bulls negate it with a break over. This is actually silver. With a break over 25. Or the bears are going to confirm here with the dollar breaking resistance and a loss of 
this uptrend support. And gold, same thing. Rising wedges are definitely in play. And in fact, today was notably red and the, the dollar was not notably green. It was green, but nothing special. Miners, red, but bulls bought the dip. And now the miners are showing us relative strength comparative to the metals after showing us relative weakness for the last week. So definitely just following the broader market here. You can see we dropped on the morning and bounced in the afternoon. But we got nice tightening ranges on these miners now. High, low, lower, high, trying to shape up a higher low. And again, I just don't have confidence in the metals or the miners in terms of a direction until the dollar lets us know how we're going to break this seven-day sideways range. Oil, daily, getting some follow-through, but upper wick, do we still have a four-hour uptrend? We do, but it's more of a pullback than the bulls would like to see there. Again, look at the correlation here with everything. Oil dropping on the morning and bouncing in the afternoon. The metals were doing it. A lot of things were correlating with the equities on today's trading. So oil bears want to see a, a confirmed four-hour downtrend as the result of any bounce to try and see a rejection from weekly EMA 12 resistance. But bigger picture, if you're looking at the longer term here, all we care about is the daily uptrend. Can bulls maintain the daily uptrend to keep this bounce going and anything above 73.40 is a daily higher low. Natural gas bears following through. Pretty tough fake out here because we confirmed the four hour uptrend. We broke resistance by three pennies and then rolled over. That's a, a tough break. We know a confirmed trend change with zero follow through means zoom out and look for a potential bear flag, but uh, a tricky one where a bull looking for that daily high or low attempt inside bar bull break and a, a pretty tough fake out. So now we're looking down at 5032 and 474 as the only nearby supports as the bears continue to keep confidence in natural gas. And the energy sector, red today, same thing. We confirmed a little daily trend change, no follow through, big drop today. Still within range, tightening up on the daily, but honestly, so big picture, let's zoom out where we stand with the broader market. Bears have favor obviously because of the CPI FOMC reaction and the fact that we just confirmed the daily downtrend on the NASDAQ. S&P 500, I'm still pretty much considering it a double bottom, but so bears definitely have short-term confidence, but again, we can, we can see a setup where it's possible for bulls to eke one out here. And again, it's all XLV and XLF. Can they hold that support and head back to the bounce high from yesterday? If they can, then SPY is going to be a daily bear flag with zero follow through. And again, use those futures charts because the futures chart shows us the bear break was even less impressive because the low from a couple days ago was hit in extended hours and it doesn't show you that on SPY's daily chart. So it's getting interesting. Burden on bulls. Appreciate you watching. Happy holidays out there again. Stay warm. It's really cold out there. Carry around extra stuff in your car, mittens, gloves, scarves, and stuff like that. If you encounter people in your travels, I made that, I made a tweet yesterday about that. And this morning came across a gentleman who was out in the cold and traveling and, you know, had his backpack and his sign and had no gloves. So I gave him some gloves. He was very grateful and they cost like $8 wherever I bought them. Also, the animals put out extra bird seed. I'm going to be hooking up the raccoons, give them some nice energy so they can stay warm. Animals burn a whole bunch of energy when it gets really cold. They need extra food and do good things. Have a great Thursday. So where we left off, I went through Mammoth Cave in Kentucky, then went through land between the lakes, and then went over to Mark Twain National Forest in Missouri. This is chapter four. So making our way westward, taking out a pretty good chunk of the country so far at this point. So here we go, Irish Wilderness, Mark Twain National Forest. My hat was pretty fitting. It was actually my grandfather's hat. He got it in Ireland when my parents got married and I wore it until it fell apart. That was my favorite hat and I've never found one like it. 
So in this spot, there was some really cool rivers and just lush green. It was nice and hot. It was uh, June at this point. So some really good spots to just swim. And there were some caves that were really cool where you could just feel really cold spring water coming out of them. A little bit eerie, but uh, a great spot to camp. Nice and flat and shade and not too many ticks crawling all over you. So I had to take a picture of this guy. And I forget his name. But had a, an interesting encounter with him. I was just there all by myself. Again, in the middle of these national forests, in the middle of the week, there is nobody around. So I'm there by myself, just, you know, reestablishing my game plan or picking where I'm going to go. And this guy comes bombing down the hill with this bike with these huge tires and his toddler sitting on the handlebars. He must have been going 30 miles an hour insanely fast. And he whips up and and comes over to me and he's this I, this Russian guy and I can't even possibly do his accent. But if you've seen the movies, you know, whether it's uh, Catch-22 or all those movies with the Russian mobsters, this was him. And he told me about how he could steal my car in 55 seconds with a screwdriver and all of his other uh, breaking the law stories and adventures. So I didn't really ever, this entire road trip, which lasted seven months, I never really had any fear, but I was always, you know, on alert. If I'm by myself, you know, I don't want to tell people exactly where I'm camping when they know I'm by myself. And I always got pepper spray and a knife within an arm's reach just in case. But other than that, I mean, you know, I was a little uneasy with this guy, just the way he approached me. But other than that, there was never any fear of animals or being attacked in the middle of the night or anything like that. But had an interesting conversation with him. He ended up you know, saying he had the greatest weed and he pulls out this really terrible weed and takes out a, a can and he crushes it and pokes the holes in it and he wants me to smoke it. So it was just a fun, memorable experience. And that was the first human interaction that I had had in two weeks. And it gets to the point where, you know, the only interaction that I, I have is going through grocery stores and the, the woman at the checkout counter. So it was nice to have an actual conversation. He invited me back to his place, but I politely declined because... I didn't want to get jumped. Capture that moment. 1,111, 111 miles on my Honda Civic. Trusty steed. So here's just more of those rivers and caves. And again, just nobody around. You can swim all you want, float down the river, get back to your camp spot, make a fire, go to bed, read a book, think about life, and think about what you're going to do tomorrow at the next new spot that you have no idea what it looks like. This was a spot that I found, and I'll go through and give some resources because there's some great websites out there. Swimmingholes.org is where I got this one. You also have Hot Springs websites that are very similar. Freecampsites.net. These are all resources where you can find free camping sites all around the country, and people describe it, and they say, you know, when they were last there. This was one I found on swimmingholes.org, and it's the local places that you would never know about you know, this is a place where all the locals go and swim and hang out, and it's not advertised anywhere. There's no signs, no anything. So I pulled in here and ended up camping. This was actually my birthday night, my 25th birthday, and there was an awesome waterfall and a swimming hole down at the bottom. There's a video somewhere of me dancing to James Brown at sunrise by myself, but just pumped to be alive. I mean, when you wake up to this spot by yourself, it's just hard not to be happy. So... Thought this was cool. We had a giant tree break in half and knock down a medium tree that broke in half and knock down a small tree and broke in half. And that's how I knew Bigfoot existed. That's a pretty cool thing. So that's all I got for Missouri. Not a whole lot going on, just making my way to Colorado. Really, Colorado and Utah was the highlight of this road trip. And in the previous road trips, I went up to the Redwoods and things like that, but stayed in the middle of the country this time around. So we'll head through Kansas. Kansas is sure exciting. If you've road tripped through Kansas, so much to see, so many things to do. I'm just kidding. It's flat and boring, and really, you just count the hours until you're through Kansas. So that's that. We'll see you tomorrow, and hope you're doing well.